Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am uh, going to continue the uh, short series we did answering the objection of the commenter uh, on our video um, called uh, No Christian is Under a Curse for Not Tithing. Now, uh, I would encourage you to go back and watch the first video in this series um, that we did uh, because we're going to answer this in context. Now, if you're curious as to what I'm talking about, um, if you go to our video entitled um, No Christian is Cursed for Not Tithing, go down to the comment section. There was a comment or several comments left by uh, someone named Bounder Chris. And he messaged me and told me that the video was absolutely false. And then he presented an argument as to why giving money to the institutional church system in the forms of what is known as tithing is still relevant today based on stories from the Old Testament. And we're examining those stories and we're going to see if they hold up um, to an exegetical interpretation of Scripture. That is where we don't place our preconceived ideas into the Scripture, but rather we allow the Scripture to say simply what they say. So um, his second argument um, is going to be about Jacob. And uh, it's going to come from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 22. And um, if you want to read all of that in context, I would certainly encourage you to. Once again, that's Genesis 28, uh, 10 through 22. Um, and it, he's, his argument here is that Jacob represents um, the Christian. And while I would not argue with that fact, I will argue with the fact that the things that Jacob did here do not represent the New Testament Christian, nor do they represent the Old Testament saint in what would be considered a normal expectation of their duty. The reason I say that is simple, and I'm going to read the passage of Scripture that I believe is relevant. In Genesis 28, verses 10 through 22, um, it's talking about here where uh, basically Jacob, um, well, I'll start reading in verse 13. It says, And the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land wherein you lie, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and south. And in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So God made Jacob here a promise, same promise that he made for Abraham, that he would bless him, that he would bless his descendants. And while I do agree that these descendants of Abraham are the body of Christ, that is the church today, uh, we are the spiritual children of Abraham. Um, and that is true whether you are Jew or Gentile. I do not believe that what he is saying here about Jacob was a requirement for all believers, not in the New Testament time, not even in the Old Testament time. So we're going to read the passage that he's talking about. Um, now, he heads this up by saying, Jacob vows to tithe at Bethel. So we're going to start reading um, in verse 18. Uh, this is, once again, Genesis uh, chapter number 28, verse 18 says, And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in the way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I may come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And all of that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee a tenth back unto thee. So first of all, let's understand what's going on here. Jacob is saying to the Lord, if you will do this thing that the Lord had already promised to do. The Lord had already promised to bless him. The Lord had already promised him that in his seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Jacob comes back to the Lord and says, if you will, in fact, do this, then I will give you a tenth. 
I'll give back a tenth. The Lord never commanded this tithe. The Lord never asked for a tenth of anything Jacob had. The Lord promised him what he would do. And Jacob went to him and said, if you will do this, I'll give you back a tenth. But that was not a command. The Lord did not demand that of him. And that is not anything that the Lord even demanded from the other Old Testament saints, with the exception of, once again, herdsmen who raised animals for human consumption and those who planted crops for food to bring the tithe into the storehouse the temple the temple was not even there was no temple at the time of this story here so there was no teaching of tithe and simply because jacob said lord i promise you i'll give you a tenth that the lord never asked for does not make this a an ordinance that is to be observed by all christians throughout all times because if you want to make that argument there's another biblical argument that you would have to make. If what you're saying is bull because Jacob promised it, since Jacob promised it to the Lord, um, everybody else has to keep that promise. Well, let me ask you a question. What about Hannah? Remember Hannah? Hannah went to the Lord. She was without a child. And she said, Lord, if you will bless me with a child, then uh, I'll give that child back to you. And the Lord did. He, uh, in fact, blessed her with a male. Uh, she named him Samuel. And if you know the story, uh, she brought the child Samuel back and offered him back to God. And so if you want to say that Jacob promising God a tenth is binding on all believers, then we would equally have to say that every believer that has a child has to give that child up uh, to the Lord to serve in a temple that does not even exist today. Um, furthermore, the new temple today that the Lord is building is not a temple made of concrete and stone. It is a temple that are made of living human beings where we are all priests to God. Uh, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone of that temple, and every one of us spiritual stones that are creating a temple. We are the house of God. We are the dwelling of God. And therefore, is no longer required for us to bring a tithe to a Levitical priesthood that no longer exists, to a temple that no longer exists. There you have it. I mean, I'm sorry, but this is going to once again be a failed attempt to prove that tithing was an for all time uh, commandment of the Lord because of something that the Lord did not even command of Jacob. And uh, once again, if you want to hold to that, then you need to go ahead and try to find you a temple to drop your firstborn child off to because apparently uh, that would also be a requirement if you want to be consistent. So once again, thank you guys for watching this. I'm going to answer, answer rather his uh, third and final objection um, in a an additional video so if you guys want to watch uh, all three of these we're going to upload them at the same time once again thanks for watching you guys have a great morning evening <laughs>